Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to an all-new episode of Beer and Stuff with C. Uh, I've got a fun one here today. I've got uh, two Scottish beers. Actually, specifically, they're both Innocent Gun. So today, we're going to check out the uh, Innocent Gun original. Hopefully, you can see that okay. Let me walk up here, see if I get the zoom going. That's the original, and also the Toasted Oak IPA, which I'm very interested in personally because I'm an IPA fan, but only when it's done right. Um, all IPAs are not created equally. Obviously, you've got the varying levels from the you know minimally hop to the super hoppy. Um, I don't know, I think there's a fine balance in there. You can overdo it. Uh, so let's just see what uh, what Innocent Gun has for us here today. I think I will start with the original, which is in a can. I've got obviously a bottle in a can here. Reason for that is simple. I try and buy singles whenever possible, especially when I'm trying out new beers because, you know, do you really want to get yourself into a six pack of shitty beer or even just okay beer that you have to, you know, drink or give away to friends or something like that, <laughs> or you're not friends, um, when you can try it with one, try one, buy it as a single, then go back for more if you like it. Um, so that's why sometimes I end up with a bottle, sometimes it's a small bottle, sometimes it's a big bottle, sometimes it's a small can, sometimes it's a big can. It's kind of like whatever the store is selling that I can get my hands on is, uh, Basically what you're gonna see here on the show. So let's get right into it here. I'm gonna crack the original and I've got a couple of notes here. So excuse me if I look like I'm reading because I am reading. Uh, so this Innocent Gun specifically is uh, based out of Scotland. It's brewed in Glasgow. The company started in 2003. Kind of an interesting story behind that is that William Grant and Sons were actually just looking, it's not a twist off, were actually just looking for a beer that they could use in their um, ale, basically their ale aged whiskeys. And uh, so the this beer, this Innocent Gun beer was originally just going to be thrown away. It was just considered to be, you know, um, a byproduct of you know their their whiskey business and it turns out that it actually tasted really good so they decided to market it and turn it into an actual product to be sold out there and it's actually specifically quite popular in Canada where I am and also in Sweden so whatever the Canadians and the Swedes we've got a taste for innocent gun so speaking of taste let's taste it oh and this is a bit of a celebration very timely topic right now i put a few bucks into bitcoins just a few months ago had a friend that was like hey this thing's gonna blow up don't miss out i'm gonna get rich get rich with me well i didn't put enough money in there to get rich let's not be ridiculous um but i did like triple my money in like three months have any of you gotten into the bitcoin have you had a good or a bad experience with Bitcoin. Well, whatever. Bitcoin's buying my beer today. Awesome. Uh, okay, original after all that. Oh, original is uh, 77 days aged in uh, bourbon casks. Here we go. Well, that's quite nice. Initially, it's, it's a little bit sweet. Um, 6.6% alcohol. Definitely can get a little bit of that bourbon influence, a little bit of vanilla, almost even a bit of an apple-y kind of um, fruity apple pear kind of taste. Yeah, it's, it's nice, it's nice. A little bit malty. Hmm. I'm enjoying that one. I tried Innocent Gun many years back 
and uh, didn't really enjoy it. So this is my first time revisiting it, and uh, I gotta say that's that's pretty good. She says matured for 77 days right on the can. I could have just read it off the can. Find that with whiskey and with with some beers is that you can get more information off the can or the box and you know you don't really have to do a lot of research. Just read what's in front of you. Okay, so that's nice. It's very mild. It's not overpowering. Goes down nice. It's very low on carbonation, so you can, you know, you could probably guzzle it back pretty quick if you wanted to. Let's switch gears. Let's get into this IPA. Um, I don't know if I said it already or not, but the Toasted Oak IPA, aged 41 days in oak. Does it say that on here? 41 days. It says it here. I didn't, you know, I did, I did two minutes of research. I looked on Wikipedia, you know, whatever. I'm regurgitating stuff from the internet, but... Again, it's all right here on the bottle, so um, that's two minutes of my life. I'm not getting back. It says brewed in small batches. What's a small batch, really? All right, here we go. Okay. That is very mild on the IPA side. This would be on the lower end of hoppiness. Uh, which is usually the primary influence in an IPA. It's sweeter. Medium sweet, I guess, is what I would say. Um, but sweeter than most of your, you know, your, uh, your lagers. 5.6%. Again, almost like no carbonation. You know, with a lot of just your regular... Uh, lagers that uh, you know you, you buy in mass quantities you know there's a fizziness and it's not really here because I didn't use a glass today I can't really tell you too much about the color yeah it's nice it's very drinkable nothing excessive happening here again the, the IPA um, part of it it seems very minimal Again, it's kind of, yeah, these are kind of similar beers. I mean, I, I guess as you would assume, but um, they both have that kind of medium to higher sweetness going on, very low on, um, on carbonation, decent alcohol content between the two of them, which is always a bonus. I mean, we're here to get the job done, right? Let me switch back and forth a couple times. Yeah, this one has more kind of a tree fruit influence to it. Where this more... Yeah, I don't really taste the oakiness. I'm trying to say, what what is that? This is more creamier. This is a creamy beer with some vanillas to it. Um... They're not really spicy. They're just very, they're very mild, very mellow, uh, easy drinking. They're both pleasant. I would probably recommend, I, I don't think I could drink a six pack of either of these, but um, they're a nice change of pace. You know, if you're, if you're, um, you know, having a, a few beers, you know, you could probably throw these in there and switch them up. If you're a big IPA person looking for that IPA pow, a pow, a pow. Um, this is not going to do it, uh, but if you just kind of want to dip your toe in the water, that's really what you're looking at here. Um, so really, I, I don't know if I really have too much more to say, but uh, I think they're both pretty good. I would recommend trying them both. They're not amazing, but they're, they're pretty solid, a nice change of pace. So yeah, go give them a try, and uh, I, think you'll, I think you'll enjoy one or two of them. But hey... There's no loser today. I'm not crushing one of these. I'm not breaking a bottle or anything like that today. Just hanging out. I hope to see you next time. I hope you enjoy the review. Click like maybe. Click subscribe. I don't know. Hopefully you'll come back. Hopefully I'll see you later. I enjoyed the beer. I enjoyed having a video with you. See you next time.